So I'm painting this lovely river scene from the Macquarie River, which is a small river out west of New South Wales, past Bathurst. Uh, what I liked was obviously the reflections, the symmetry of the mirroring between the sky and the water. I've constrained myself to only using three primary colours, and this is the colours you can mix with cadmium red light, Hansa yellow medium, and cobalt blue. I started off with a value map, a guide on the values, which is a critical step to get to successful paintings. And I would recommend doing a value study as much as you can when you decide to paint, because you can always refer back to what's light, what's mid value, and what's dark. Usually the first thing I sketch is the horizon line and sometimes I use a ruler or just a piece of paper just so that I can get a straight line. The horizon line will obviously determine where we separate the sky from uh, the land or the foreground and in this case it's just below the halfway point. And then I'm going to block in the two shorelines and pay attention to where I want the focal point to be. The focal point in this instance is that tree in the middle ground um, and then have a, a shoreline on the right leading into the picture and then obviously to the left um, drawing in some of those rocks. The rocks will be my highlights so some uh, white in the page that will draw the eye and lead the eye to a focal point. That big rock on the right hand side is a key feature of this painting. So I'm going to take a bit of care of drawing that in the right position, in the right shape, and also making sure that the rocks that surround it are supporting that main rock there in that composition. And thinking about the lights and the darks there, because I really want this rock to stand out. It's one of my key highlights in the painting. And once I'm happy with how I've positioned the rocks, I do a bit of shading with my pencil. Uh, I know that I'm going to paint over that with you know, pretty dark colours, so you won't be able to see the pencil lines later on. And then I place my main tree, which is the focal point, or one of the most prominent elements in this particular composition. I don't draw a lot of details on the trees, so I do that with my brush later on. I also put some lines where I want the branches to come in from the side, just so that I have a bit of a guide. Finally, I block in the reflections, just so that I can remind myself when I paint the water that this is where I want the main darks to be in the water. Time to wet the page with some clean water. That's how I usually start a landscape if I want to paint a wet and wet sky. This will prepare the paper, it will loosen up the sizing a little bit and it will be much easier to get those nice soft clouds in there. I'm going to mix a little bit of my red into the cobalt just so that it is a little bit toned down and has a bit of a purple feel to it. And then I'm going to paint the blue sky around the clouds. And because my paper is wet, there'll be lots of soft edges. For this painting, I want the sky to be there, but not be a prominent element at all. And I'm using my big mop for this because I want the clouds to be quite loose and not have a lot of detail. And while I'm at it, I'm going to mirror the sky in the water area. And I've also wet the, the bottom part of the paper, which you couldn't see in the video, but I wet the entire page so that I have also soft clouds in the water reflection. And now I'm going to strengthen that mix a little bit, make it a bit darker because I want to add some cloud shadows in. As you know, white clouds usually have a shadow sort of at the bottom of the clouds because the sun is quite high. This is sort of midday, after early afternoon sun, so the 
sun is really high in the sky and the clouds have shadows at the bottom. That's all I'm going to do for the sky and I've already moved on to mixing a bit of yellow into my blue and create a soft green which is blocking out where my trees are going to go which will get a lot darker in subsequent layers and washes so this is the lightest uh, value of my greens and then I proceed to mix that into a brown which is really a, just a dark orange so the red and a bit of yellow and then a tiny bit of the blue I'm trying to emulate a burnt sienna color and as you can see you can mix most colors that you would have in a tube just from the primaries and it's a good exercise and good practice to paint with just three colors three primaries from time to time so I'm using a strip of paper there just to color match and to kind of see what the color looks like before I put it on my painting. And this earth color, this brown color is what I'm going to use for my rocks. And immediately I'm going to add a bit of blue into it just to cool it down. Indicate where shadows are going to go. I'm going to carry that same color through to the other side to maintain uh, continuity and have a visual connection between the rocks on both sides of the river. I'm cooling that mix down a bit with a bit more blue and this will be my first layer of the trees on the left hand side. Now I want those trees to recede, so I don't want them to become a focal point or you know a distracting element on the page. So keeping them very light, very loose, quite cool in color. And I'm going to darken that mix even further, I'm pushing it almost into a purple or kind of a mid-value gray. And I'm going to test this again on my strip of paper first just to kind of seeing how the values stack up. This is for my background trees. And you'll see in a minute, once this layer is dry, that that will dry a lot lighter than what it looks like now. That's because the paper is quite saturated at this point. We started with clear water, we added the sky layer over the top, and now I'm going to come in with another quite wet layer. So those background mountains will wash out a lot. And while I've got this mix on my brush, I'll also add some shadows underneath the rocks. Painting has dried. I'm moving on to my next layer. The background trees have dried significantly lighter uh, than I probably intended. So I'm going to just glaze over that a bit and negatively paint into that lighter band of trees. I really want a bit of contrast between the far distant hill or mountain and that tree line in the, in the middle ground. Now I'm ready to move on to the trees and the middle ground uh, bushes and shrubs and trees there so I'm mixing a fairly strong green and I'm using one of my natural hair brushes. I find I can achieve the most organic tree shapes and textures with a natural hairbrush. I push some of the values into more of the shadow area and the blue and then others more into the yellow for where the sun hits the trees. And you know, this is another advantage of using only three pigments and using like a, a dish or a, a plate like that is that you have all your colors on the plate, like the full range of colors is there and I can just add a bit of blue or a bit of red or a bit of yellow as I'm doing now. Rather than picking them one by one out of little compartments. So it's a very spontaneous and free way to mix your colors. And I don't always do that, um, as you know from other videos. 
that was the intent for this painting. I'm trying to achieve a painting that I'm happy with. It's on a quarter sheet, so it's a good size. I, uh, I want to frame that one if it works out. So I mix different values of green, warmer, cooler, darker, lighter, just to get that variation in while still maintaining cohesion and connection because we're using the same colours, so it's still harmonious. I'm adding some darker values just around the main rock. This is probably where the strongest contrast will be in my painting. I'm going to speed this up a bit because it's the same technique all the way through those trees and dropping in you know a few different values here and there while it's wet just to create a bit of shadow and a bit of variation in there but we're not done yet with those trees we'll come back to them uh, in the next wash. I'm just going to paint around the tree trunks there just to offset the shoreline and then I'm going to move on with the same colors to the left side of the bank. Now that left side is a little bit further away, um, should have a little bit less importance and dominance so I'm just going to be careful of how much contrast and detail I'm adding in there. I want those two trees to be there but not really attract too much attention. A few details on the actual ground there, creating some texture, that could be rocks, it could be grass, not a lot of detail. Now I've mixed a big puddle of river colour, which is kind of a green blue, and before I paint in the reflections and the water, I'm going to spray it, let's re-wet the paper because as predicted, I did wet it at the very beginning with clear water, but obviously that's long dried. But I did that mostly for the sky and the clouds. And now we come to the main attraction, which is the actual water and the reflection of the trees in that water. So I'm using a square brush for that, which you won't see me do a lot. Um, again, a bit of an experiment. It gives you a bit more of a blocky feel to your brush strokes. But I thought this might be an interesting effect. And the thing with water is that you've got to kind of keep it very horizontal and or vertical. Otherwise water can very easily look um, wonky or running uphill if you don't keep your brush strokes quite uh, straight either you know horizontal or vertical except for reflections they can obviously be wobbly uh, depending on the reflection but here I'm sort of trying to achieve a bit of a blocky effect work with a bit of dry brush as well this brush is good for dry brush it doesn't hold a lot of water it's a synthetic square brush because um, I want to get some water reflections in there as you can see, my paper isn't terribly wet, so it's not that it's running all over the shop here. Um, I still have a lot of control of the edges. And despite me having done a value study and a color study, not entirely you know, confident about what I'm doing. And I hesitate a lot because I'm going to have to think about each brush stroke and whether that's going to turn out the way that I had intended. And I'm going to be a bit careful here because I want to leave some highlights in the far distance to connect the right side with the left side. And that's sort of the main attraction in that gap between the two shorelines. And I've dropped in some warmer colour here, so a bit of brown. Because um, that's the, the fun part about reflection. 
uh, you can just drop in different kind of colors, create a lot of texture, create a lot of interest. And it doesn't have to perfectly match what's above it. Just dragging that brush across the paper again a few times just to create some dry brush effect. And I'll continue to mix darker values into my reflections. And pay a bit more attention to the edges. Touching up a bit of that middle area there, just adding a bit of that brighter green. The objective here is just to create a lot of variation in the reflections. And now I'm lifting out a bit of pigment to have the white rocks reflect in the water as well, just with a damp clean brush. And it didn't quite get enough pigment out because I think the uh, wash already started to dry. So I'm just going in with the tissue and just lifting out a bit more. And now I'm mixing a bit more of a dark brown. I want to add a few shadows underneath the rocks just to make that uh, line between the rocks and the water a little bit stronger. And because I'm using this particular combination of colors, it's a bit hard to get a really dark value. You can't really mix a black with it, but you know, that's part of the challenge of working with a particular set of colors and seeing what you can do with it. It is dark enough for some uh, final values to go in, just to add some shadows to the rocks and create a stronger uh, differentiation between the different values. As you can see there, off to the right of my drawing board um, is my value study, which is my map. So I'll always look at that and make sure that I've got um, the values uh, in the same way that I've mapped them out. And now that I've finished the rocks, I can tell that my trees are not quite as strong in values as they should be. And also a bit too flat, so I am going to mix in a bit more of my darker green to create uh, a bit more light and shadow in my main trees. And I just lightly brushed it in. This is dry brushing at this point. And then strengthening the shadows above the rocks, I want to create a strong contrast between the top of the rocks and the trees that are just behind it. This is one of the key elements in this composition, is that contrast between the rock and the trees. And then it's time to add in the trees, which are the main characters in this composition and I've left the tree trunks white as I painted around them and now it's time to just add the shadow side of those tree trunks and then extend them as well past uh, the foliage that I painted thus far and mixing the darkest value I possibly can achieve with those three colors there and it's a very dry mix. It's almost pure pigment at this point. Very little water in it. So I can paint in those tree branches that are coming in from the side of the painting. This creates additional depth because it's sort of hinting at the foreground trees that we can't see to the right of the composition. That is always a good device 
to use in landscape paintings, having something coming in in the, in the immediate foreground will push everything else back. And I'm using my little rigger brush for that. And when I use it sideways, I can create texture that looks like leaves. I'm not going to paint individual leaves. I never do. Or well, rarely, let's put it that way. Here I'm just scrubbing a bit of texture across those, those tree branches to make it look like eucalyptus uh, leaves. And that way I can also cover some time to add in a few birds in the far distance. I got a sense that this middle area was a little bit empty and I didn't want to mess with the background trees or the reflections. So a few birds in the far distance always adds a bit of life and something else to look at. And here we are, we're finished with my river painting and you can see that it is matching my value study in terms of the values that I've achieved. The composition is probably a little bit more stretched out than in my initial value study. Time to step back and have a look. I've removed the tape and then I realized that oh, I could probably do with some white highlights here and there. So out comes my white gouache straight out of the tube and I use a pointy synthetic brush for that so that I have a lot of control. And then I'm just going to add a couple of white lines into the water to break up some monotonous patches and to create that illusion of light hitting the water surface. And now I can call this one finished. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and please do try this one.